you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified of all future uploads. And check the description box below the video for important links and information. How you doing, guys? This is Eric from RuleTheWasteland.com. Link to the shirts in the description. Um, I've seen a couple videos lately. I think it was Let's Talk About Prepping, and I believe it was Bug Out Bubba. It's a couple great channels you should check out. They've each done videos recently about the realities of a potential second or third waves of die-offs in a major shit the fan event and the realities of what it would really take to be prepared to survive um you know deep into one of these major potentially major shit the fan events long-term total grid down events and uh, i have a couple thoughts on the subject first of all i think their their assessment of what this would be like is mostly correct and how serious it would be, how difficult it would be to prepare, like Bug Out Bubba specifically saying that I don't think anyone realizes exactly the logistical requirements that it would take just because people are like, oh, we'll start farming if it lasts more than a year or whatever. And it's like, that's not just, you know, easier said than done, let's just put it that way. And uh, so even so-called preppers could be potentially dying off just as badly as everyone else or at just a high rate once their initial stockpiles wear off. And I don't think that that's incorrect necessarily. But here's my thought on the subject, is that we're taught for this to happen, we're talking about such a specific outlier event that I'm going to be honest, I do not prepare for events like that. I'm, I mean, that's not part of my prepper mission statement. My prepper mission statement is I want to be prepared to do without any external systems of support, whether it's a power company, as little utilities and uh, uh, emergency services and everything as possible for six months to a year. If I can go longer than that, great. But that's my prepper mission statement, at least six months to outwards of a year. So I'm not, I'm specifically not trying, I have to remind myself of this because my brain goes to crazy places just like the rest of us, that I'm specifically not trying to prepare for these massive uh, society ending events for the simple reason that they're incredibly low likelihood of occurring, luckily. And um, the resources that it takes to prepare for them are for adequately to prepare for such an event are extreme, like Bug Out Bubba mentioned, to the point where the opportunity cost of preparing adequately for such a low outlier event takes such a massive amount of resources away from everything else in the rest of your life, whether that's normal life, fun stuff, regular prepping, whatever. The opportunity cost is just too high in relation to the actual risk. And so I just, I'm not preparing to supply myself with food 10 years into a major event. I'm just not doing it. I'm taking the risk, the incredibly small risk that's going to happen that hopefully I'll be able to figure something out when it does. I'll have a, you know, six months to a year of supplies to figure out what I need to do. And I mean, just to show you how low a likelihood of these events are, I mean, walk through the process of what's supposed to have happened for this to get that way. Even if it's something massive like EMP, entire country is without power, nothing, it's massive, nothing electrical is working. Is, um, you know, there's probably just going to be 90% of people die within a year or so, something like that. But is the whole entire planet fried? Probably not. So do you think that the, the U.S., the United States of America, one of the most resource-rich countries, tons of space, is just going to be sitting empty for 10 years? No one from other countries is going to just decide to move in and start setting up shop here? You know, no one in any areas are going to have rebuilt anything? I think that that's possible, but it's incredibly unlikely. Same thing with any other sort of pandemic. Like it would have to literally be for something to be 10 years down the road and nothing has recovered. Basically, you would have to have um, just such an extreme event that would have to be worldwide, a literal zombie apocalypse, nuclear war or something like that, that I'm just it is possible. But it's just such a low outlier event that I'm just not going to dedicate the amount of resources necessary to prepare for that. And I am. I, that you have to be honest about like that's me admitting I'm not preparing for that level of an event. I think it's such a low likelihood, thank God, that I'm going to stick to preparing for to, to reach a level of preparedness that I think covers 95 to 99 percent of all major disaster events that are like that are even approaching anything resembling likely. And uh, looking back at history, kind of bears this out. Has there ever been in human history? Has there ever been an event that would be that severe. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Anything that is that serious is never that widespread, you know, to where the entire, you know, continent that you're on, or let alone the entire world, are to that level of destruction. I think it's just so unlikely 
that I'm not going to spend the amount of resources necessary to do it. And I, I don't think most people should, unless you really feel strongly that this is going to happen for whatever reason. I don't think it's literally worth it. I think that the, you, like I said, it's about opportunity cost. It's not about this could never happen. This isn't going to happen. It's about opportunity cost and just uh, taking a uh, calculated assessment of the situation, weighing the risks and the costs. And um, yeah, that's my assessment on it is that I'm not preparing for that because I think that they're right. And I think that the amount of resources necessary would be extreme. But I also think the likelihood of such a situation occurring is so low that I'm not going to give up that amount of resources for it. Let me know what you guys think. Check out their videos because I do have a very good take on what that situation might look like if it does occur. And uh, yeah, check out RudeWaysand.com and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, and don't forget you can support yourself and this channel by checking out RuleTheWastelandStore.com, where we have an ever-increasing amount of survival and preparedness gear, including one of the best survival fishing kits on the market.